Welcome back to London, a city bursting with pride and respect for the Queen. There are also tributes across the Commonwealth, including Ontario. Politicians were given a chance to reaffirm their commitment to the monarchy, and some chose not to. Richard Southern is at Queen's Park with that story tonight. Richard. Lisa, thank you. We have seen several rites of passage here at Queen's Park in recent days. For many of us, these have never happened in our lifetimes, but they're steeped in history and tradition. Today, the Speaker convened a special sitting of the legislature. It was filled with prayers, tributes, and expressions of condolence for the royal family. For many people, myself included, we have never lived in a world without Queen Elizabeth. And so, it is a truly solemn occasion that we now find ourselves saying goodbye to her after so long. People have lost a calm and reassuring symbol of stability and an icon of dignity, resolve and good humour. Over the course of 70 years on the throne, the Queen was a steadfast and reliable friend of Canada and Canadians from coast to coast to coast. Prior to that ceremony, MPPs were given the opportunity to re-swear their allegiance to His Majesty the King, but it was up to each member to decide if they wanted to participate. There's a bit of legalese involved here since every official already made a pledge to the monarch when they were sworn in here at Queen's Park earlier this year. Today was merely a chance to reaffirm that commitment, but some chose to sit it out including Indigenous NDP MPP Saul Mamakwa. For Indigenous people, it's a very complex uh, relationship that we have with the Crown. And uh, I say that because, uh, you know, there are things that are attached to the relationship with First Nations. I'm talking about colonialism. I'm talking about oppression. We live it every day as First Nations. We need to be able to move forward in a good way. And uh, that perhaps one way is to acknowledge and apologize for the residential schools, the Indian residential school, because there's so many children of our children, our ancestors that died. Would you like to see Canada cut ties with the monarchy altogether, Saul? I don't know how I would feel about that because Again, that relationship with the, the monarchy, with the queen, as indigenous people, where it is the governments that have, honor, have not honored, respected the treaties. Aside from all the honors uh, for the late queen and new king, the speaker also officially adjourned the house today. And the plan is to not reconvene the legislature here until October 25th, after the municipal elections. Lisa, back to you in London. All right, Richard, thank you. Back here in London, an army of people have been busy behind the scenes making sure the tributes and ceremonies are picture perfect. Perhaps the hardest working among them, though, the florists. So it was the centenary of the Australian Air Force. Janet Davies is the owner of Stems of Windsor, a floral shop in the town where the Queen will be laid to rest. There was no way that Davies could prepare for the recent surge in sales She's even been receiving orders from faraway places like the U.S. and Australia. But the work has quickly blossomed into a labour of love. We've just sent everything just very simply wrapped, which I think the Queen would have loved because she was a huge flower lover. And she would have appreciated anything seasonal and uh, local. The Queen loved purple and uh, I'm with her on that one. I find purple flowers very beautiful. Purple, white, uh, she loved lily of the valley, sweet peas, freesia, um, scented flowers. She adored scented flowers. Flowers will be the centerpiece of the Queen's funeral, which takes place bright and early Monday morning. Please, we hope you will make plans to join us for our live coverage on City TV, citynews.ca, and all of our social media channels.